good evening everybody uh, i had pain here in the back it was just coming and going i did not share to pastor i did not share even with prem nobody was knowing that and uh, i was just sitting here and when pastor asked me sa and uh, we were just trying to correlate it and then that time pastor asked next question is do you have children and then he left he left and uh, mahesh was sitting here he asked to mahesh do you have pain he said no then i said i have that pain which comes and goes and uh, then pastor took me here he made me to sit here he holded my feet uh, you all if you are in the whatsapp group you would have seen that video i can do this no worry that's it of the who wants to see this it's just see this is why we have that who wants to see this it's not equal okay you want to come and see you can come and see but you must be quick it's because of the back pains that the muscles pulls this uh, like that it spasms in the back So come and see this. I'm just going to do this. Yeah, that's better. Come and see this. Okay, let's just see. Okay, are you watching? Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus that it's going to be healed today. Thank you Jesus. Thank Whoa. you Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh this feet let feet was little smaller because of that pain and i felt it's growing when pastor was praying and within a second of fracture it became normal both the legs give praise to god even the migraine then i was just coming for the meeting and i decided by myself i'm going to get prayed through him and this migraine has to be ceased permanently from my life and he prayed for me yet i'm completely all right praise god <laughs> yeah i have been asking him i was taking so many pills and uh, they gave me some month ka medicine and all nothing was working out for me nothing it was really very terrible for me <laughs> now i'm completely all right thank you jesus i was sharing on practical ministering um uh, healing the sick uh, to remember this is important that the success is in you going So when you pray for the sick it's a success. <laughs> um it can only fail if you don't do it. <laughs> so go for it. Pray for the sick. Lay hands on the sick. We've just been sharing something. Say you have a you want to pray for someone that's sick but you you know you don't have the confidence so you left the situation. I want to teach you that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. understand that your sins are forgiven understand that you are washed that you are the righteousness of god listen you are not righteous only you are the righteousness of god the cross brought you his righteousness he took your sin he gave you his righteousness and so that gives you boldness to step out and pray for the sick you understand so say you walk past someone that you should have prayed for don't let condemnation weigh you down If you still have time pray for them or just pray for the next one. You understand? Don't operate out of this thing that we call condemnation. That is not part of a Christian's life. We just said by taking communion that all our sins, past, present and future have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus. When we took that cup, we said that I'm washed in his blood, I'm the righteousness of God. So we had a question and we've been speaking on it and we all uh, they understood my explanation but I want to explain it to everyone. So darkness and sickness. I don't focus on it and I don't overemphasize the works of darkness. I overemphasize Jesus. <laughs> I spent my time on knowing Jesus, not knowing the devil and his works. You understand? I purposefully focus on Jesus. Hebrews 12:2 says, 
looking away, says running this race with patience and endurance, getting rid of all the things that keeps you back, but run. And how do you do it? By looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. The darkness is real and the light is real, but the light is more powerful than darkness. And that's what I'm saying to you. So if you want to get rid of darkness, you should know where to switch on the light. And so if you know Jesus, you're constantly switching the light. <laughs> so if I spend my time on knowing Jesus, there's light. Freedom was given through the cross. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. The experience of that freedom comes by knowing Jesus. So I'm just going to speak on these lines. I'll get back maybe uh, to give you guys time to heal your friend. <laughs> to minister healing to your friend. I'm going to give you all time, all right? So, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So, a Christian, born again, have a complete new nature in Christ. You're a new creation. You are not part of your natural born family anymore in terms of how uh, your position in Christ. So, my father is my natural father. But my real father is God. And I'm a child of God. To as many as did receive him, he gave the authority to become sons of God. Children of the Most High God. So, I'm a complete new creation. I've been set free. My sins have been forgiven past, present and future. This doesn't give me a desire to sin. <laughs> this gives me the freedom, the boldness to know Jesus. Knowing that I'm forgiven causes me to think, ah, I can now boldly come to Jesus and know Him in, in relationship. So, you have been set free. I explained that Hebrews 10 explains the following, that by a single offering, He has forever completely cleansed, perfected, those who are consecrated and made holy. That's verse 14. Verse 10 says, By this offering you have been made holy. Your sins are forgiven. Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. John 3 verse 16, God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. God did not send His Son, verse 17, to judge the world but to save the world. This is the basis of judgment. Those who believe is not judged, not condemned. They are, ju they, are not, they are not condemned. Those who do not believe, they are already judged and condemned because they do not believe. And so the basic simplicity of the, this is the sim basic message, the simplicity of the gospel is that Christ died for our sins. I said He died for our sickness, but He also died for our sins. <laughs> and Isaiah 53 says, He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement of our, sin, uh, of our um, well-being was upon Him. Peace was upon Him. And with His stripes we are healed. He was wounded for my transgressions. So, the righteousness of God, the judge, uh, the, judge the righteous judge, gave his judgment and so your sin was punished in the body of Jesus you became the sacrifice for your sins so it's totally righteous now for you to who believe in what he did to receive total forgiveness it's unrighteous and unjust for, for the same sin to be punished twice. Your sin was punished in the body of Jesus. And so your sins have been, your punishment for your sins have been given out. The judgment said, this you are guilty and this is your punishment. You should die. 
And so Jesus was beaten, took the nails in his hands and feet, and he got up, raised from the dead after he died on the cross, and he accomplished, the, the, and he took the punishment of our sins. Thank you, Jesus. This is also what communion stands for. That one was ripped apart for you. If you read Isaiah 53, it says, Like a lamb that was led to the slaughter, he opened not his mouth. There goes the sin sacrifice. There goes the lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. That's what John said when he saw Jesus. Here comes the lamb of God. Here comes the offering for our sins. Here comes Jesus the Lamb of God. And so the Lamb of God was slaughtered on a cross for me and you. So it's free for us, but for Him it cost His life. Righteousness is a precious gift that was paid for by the blood of Jesus. For you it is free. For Him it cost His own life. And so it's so precious that we actually must just accept, I don't deserve it, but I've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Christians, the power of a Christian life lies in what I'm saying now. And if I want to teach you to heal the sick, maybe I must just spend a few minutes on this <laughs> before I come back to the practical teaching. If I take the whole night on this, we'll continue tomorrow with the healing side. But you need to understand... That the scripture declares that you've been made righteous by God. And that it is a gift from God. I live from a platform that I call righteousness. I don't live here and then righteousness is my aim that I aim for and work for and try and attain. I don't live to become better. I don't live to try and attain righteousness. I've been made the righteousness of God. That's not my end goal. It's my starting blocks. I feel if you watch at athletics, that you watch the Olympic Games, if you watch athletics, you get those starting blocks that causes them to get out of it and run. Your starting blocks in the Christian life is a gift called righteousness that you got freely. Now run your race. What is your life then about? Your life is about knowing Jesus. So I don't aim to get righteousness. I got it as a gift. I aim to know Jesus. I don't live to become and try and become better. I live to know and have and enjoy fellowship with Jesus. I live to have and enjoy fellowship with Jesus. <laughs> Yo, I read the scriptures. Hebrews 10 verse 10. Hebrews 10 verse 14. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21, He became sin for us who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Thank you, Jesus. I am the righteousness of God. I am washed in His blood. I am forgiven. I am free right now. But now say you don't experience that freedom. And here's the thing. I've been made totally free. Once for all. But I will experience that freedom in a relationship with Jesus. <laughs> so, the problem is not that you are not free. The problem is that you think you are not free. <laughs> the problem is not that He didn't deliver you from darkness. The Bible says He delivered us from the kingdom of darkness, placed us in the kingdom of His Son, the kingdom of light. You went through the way out of darkness into light. You've been translated. You're not living one foot in the darkness, one foot in the light. Demons, Jesus, demons, you are in Christ. 
So you've been redeemed from this life. You've been set free into a whole new life. But you still in your mind think the way you thought before you were delivered. You were delivered when you received Christ. So, what needs to happen now is Jesus and His presence and the light must just renew, enlighten your mind so that you can see who you are in Christ and so that you can experience the freedom that He purchased for you through His blood. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. Be transformed. How? By trying to chase the devil? No. By the renewing of your mind. <laughs> you think you are a chicken. And now you try and fly like an eagle. Remember my message on Saturday? Those of you who were here. You think that you are an eagle and you try and be, fly like an eagle. Ach, you think you're a chicken and you try and fly like an eagle. You are an eagle. The truth must just hit you. Hey, I'm a son of God. I'm above these things. These things doesn't have control over me. I have full power and authority over all this thing. I'm ruling with Christ. So you just need to know who you are. And so the problem with Christians is not the devil, but their own identity crisis. <laughs> Do you get it? Your problem is we don't know how mighty and strong we are in Christ. You're a giant. <laughs> You're a walking giant in the spirit. <laughs> the devil and his demons are totally afraid <laughs> of you. You carry power and authority far above any powers of darkness. You are... F the Bible says... Okay. Darkness, right? So I, this is what I'm not saying. Listen, I do believe there is a devil. I do believe there are d demons. There is darkness. I'm not saying they're not there. I'm just saying I'm far above. <laughs> ah. So it's like the, the devil is walking around like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. Okay? Where is, he, where is he walking around? On earth. But where am I seated? <laughs> so he's looking for me here. But I'm far above here. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. So, it's like an elephant... And an ant. And the church made this ant so big that we are scared of him. But I am the elephant. So can you just excuse me if I don't pay too much attention to the ant that's trying to stop me from reaching my goal. My goal is knowing Jesus. I live to know the Lord Jesus. I live to know Him for who He is. I don't have time for this end. I only have time to focus and know Jesus Christ. And when I know that, I get to know who I am. And when I know who I am, I speak and I see what I say. I say, free. I say, be healed. I say, see. And it happens. <laughs> you see, that's why Jesus, He just spoke a word. And the people were free. But today, oh, you have to go for hours to get free. Session of the session of deliverance. While Jesus said, go, then they went. Isn't it time for us to realize who we are, church? Shouldn't we help the, the world out there to see how great our God is? But if we... If they come to church and they just hear about the devil, it didn't help them at all. Let them hear about Jesus. Let them hear about His cross. Let them hear about the ultimate victory that was attained through Jesus when He died on the cross. I am not fighting the devil for a victory. 
I have received a victory freely as a gift from the victorious one, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so my faith is not in my fight. My faith is in the fight of Jesus where he conquered. I'm living from a higher realm, a higher life, heaven and earth. I am seated above all principalities. Jesus is above all principalities. I am seated with Him. So to say that is an ant is not wrong. And I'm an elephant. <laughs> okay. I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all principalities. Jesus is there. I'm with Him. I'm a king. Romans 5 um, the last verse, um, uh, no, not the last verse, 17, 5, 17, 19. I'm not sure. Those who re receive the gift of grace and righteousness, as death reigned through one man, much more surely will those who receive the gift of grace and righteousness reign as kings in life through the one man Jesus Christ <sighs> what I just said must just whew, help you to see I am far above the powers of darkness I am a king because I receive the gift of grace and righteousness and a king doesn't rule by fighting he rules by speaking. Especially if the victory has been won. Let me explain. There was a man, his name was David. And he was a young man, not even called for battle, looking after his father's sheep. And he went to, to take the food to his brothers. And there was a war. And the champion of the Philistines, Goliath, stood before the armies of Israel. And he, def the, he, he spoke words against them. He, 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 he defiled or defied the armies of Israel. And he spoke against them. And David heard this. And to make a long story short, after he said, I killed the bear, I killed the lion. Have you read those, those stories? He said, when a lion gra grabbed a sheep, I ran after it, grabbed it by the beard, and smote it. <laughs> Here a lion grabs your sheep. What do you say? Sorry. You can have him. <laughs> I'm talking naturally, looking after the sheep. Because you can get killed. But David ran after the lion, grabbed it by the beard, and smote the lion. So then he came and he said, this Philistine will be like them. <laughs> and he picked up five stones. Five is the number of grace. He picked up five stones. And he just needed one. <laughs> and he killed the giant. Cut off his head. <laughs> Victorious. And this is what happened. Only two, only one from Israel fought. And only one from the other side. And so David brought a victory to the whole nation. And the children and the women at home, According to Isaiah 52, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of them that bring glad tidings. So the context is this. When it was war and Israel won, the messengers went back home <laughs> with a message. We won. We won. And the women and children started dancing. <laughs> Rejoicing. They were not even at the battlefield. But they say, we won. We won. 
the men of Israel were not fighting. But we won. We won. One man fought and gave the whole nation of Israel the victory. And so David is a type of Christ. If you fight the devil always, you'll be like the Israelites coming and saying, David says, I'll fight the Philistine. Then you jump next to him and say, I'll fight with you. David says, oh, this is my battle. Stand back. I brought you. I will bring you victory today. I will slay the champion. <laughs> and when he's gone, all the others are defeated. So Jesus made an open display of the devil and the, and the forces of darkness. The principalities. He made an open display, triumphing over them through the cross. He brought us the victory. The problem is, we are fighting a defeated enemy. While we must just enforce our authority, you know, by believing in our victory. The fight Christians need to fight is a fight of faith. What is a fight of faith? You need to keep on believing Jesus won. And if you look to his victory, you'll enjoy his victory. It's like Jesus ran a race in my place. And I wait at the finish line. And Jesus ran and he won. So he met me there and said, come, let's do a victory lap. A lap of honor. And people clap for madness. Woo! Woo! But I did nothing. Jesus is just showing off his victory through me. I'm his trophy of victory that he uses to tell the world that he won. So he displays victory through me. How does he do it? I just say, blind eyes see, and they see. He's displaying, showing off his victory. <laughs> Not showing off, but showing his victory. You know? I'm his trophy. I just joined him at the finish line. My race is a victory lap. <laughs> the victory for Christians lies in this. Knowing that you have been made victorious by the victory of Christ. Now you treat the devil differently. Like I said, excuse me if I'm an elephant and the devil is an ant and I seem to ignore him a bit and I just step on him. Ex excuse me for not paying too much attention to that little ant. It's because I've learned that I'm a giant. It's because I've learned how, how, how much power I possess. And so, Christians, your problem is not the devil. Your problem is an identity crisis. You think you're a chicken, but you've been made an eagle. <laughs> you think you are weak, sick, and defeated, while Jesus blessed you with a victory, while He conquered everything in your place and just gave you freely. Say, you are. Listen, the Bible says you are more than a conqueror. Okay. You can say a conqueror is someone that's going to conquer. I'll say a conqueror is someone that already conquered. <laughs> Depending on how you view it. Uh, again, the devil is real, but Jesus is also real. Darkness is real, but the light is also real. Sin is real, but the blood is also real. You see, I'm not denying all these things. I'm just overemphasizing the right thing. I just, I just embrace the light. How much darkness in this, in this room? By one flip of the finger, <laughs> ting, it's out. So when I minister to the sick, I also emphasize, I focus on Jesus and the light that removes the sickness. I don't look so much at the sickness and the situation. Many times, especially... There was a guy, he came to me with an, I was in the, 
in, in the middle of Africa, in Tanzania, we drove 1,500 kilometers with a taxi over the whole Tanzania. Ne next to the border of Burundi, when there was wars going, and we drove, and the guy just put, he just went. We drove right through to preach the gospel to people that we've never met. We are moved like Paul with, with the love of Christ. And so, a guy came to me there in the bush. And the lady came and she had an open septic wound that smelled so bad that you, you, you can't even stand the smell. And she came to me and said, Pastor, can you help me? I almost burst in tears there if I think of a situation. Now the natural mind, where's the closest hospital? <laughs> I think natural. We need to help this woman. She's going to die from this infection. Her whole arm is rotting. It's, it's terrible. Sorry for the detail, but it's really terrible. And so I thought, where's the hospital? And I thought, 600 kilometers from this place, through the bush, which can take you two days. I said, hmm, let's pray. What did I do? I didn't look at the wound. I prayed like this. Where was my eyes? On Jesus. I was thinking of glory in the at the throne of God. I was not thinking of this mess. And I was thinking, thank you, Jesus. We know she doesn't have any help here. It will not even help to take her to hospital. So let's pray. And I saw the light of God going into that wound. I saw the light just sh 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 shining into that wound. Sh 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 and I said, Amen. When I looked, the wound was still there. But the next day, no sign of that wound. Completely closed down. Closed. The infection gone. So, I could have looked at the situation or I could have looked at the solution. When you get too much emphasis, put too much emphasis on the devil, you, your attention is not where it should be. Here's a little song. That you can think is, is not for mature people, but this is for true mature Christians. Listen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face. And the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Hebrews 12 is to look away. Sure. Now, I've been taught when a mountain is before me, I must go and fight this mountain. Get it out of the way. No, Jesus said, speak to the mountain. He didn't say, go and wrestle with the mountain. <laughs> he said, just speak. It will go. Just, give it a, just say, mountain, go. Then it will go. You can only do that by knowing your authority. When you know who you are. Then you speak and it goes. It doesn't help you shouting at the mountain. Um, spiritually speaking. If you have trouble in your life. Situations, right? There's a mountain. So here's what you do. Mountain, go. And if it listens, you just rejoice with the grace of Jesus. And if it doesn't, what do you do? You turn to Jesus. So here's the mountain. You, you are in Christ, and the mountain is here. You, say, you speak to it, you say, I, I say, be healed. Your family member is sick. You say, be made whole. I pray for healing. Okay? And so when it goes, you say, thank you, Jesus. When it doesn't go, you do this. I turn 
my eyes upon Jesus. I look full in His wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. So after, then I, then I turn, not away from Jesus, but as I turn to Jesus, and I want to look to where the mountain is, I find a little molehill. Because I just spend time with the one that gives me my identity and shows me how strong I am and how great his victory was. And I embrace the, fi the finished work of the cross of Jesus. I embrace what Christ did on the cross. And I've been consumed by his love for me. And when I looked around, the mountain became a molehill. And I just walked over it. Jesus! You're a, you know that song. You're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. If you know how much he loves you, your problems will become molehills. Perfect love cast out all fear. Knowing the love of the Savior for you takes away all fear. Darkness works with fear. Fear is the root of darkness. That's the way darkness operates. The light and the kingdom of the light is also the kingdom of love. love operate, light operates through love. Darkness operates through fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect light casts out all darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Sure, that molehill example is in the Word. Zechariah 4, it says, It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord. He says, Who is this great mountain that stands before Sarah Babel? This mountain... In the Amplified, it says, this mountain will become a mere molehill. <laughs> you know a molehill? That little thing in the ground that causes the ground to... I don't know if you get it here, but a mole is like... Just a little molehill. You don't even... It's just dust or ground. You just... So this mountain is big because you are focusing on it. What you should do is just speak to it and when it goes, you celebrate. And when it doesn't, you, you give it the back. Look here. <laughs> I give you no attention. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm too busy with Jesus. <laughs> uh, and then I look back. It's gone. I'm a giant. And the devil is an ant. Whoa, guys, if you can see yourself through God's eyes, you will never ever have again a problem with the devil. You will just simply live in victory. Okay? But I'm also growing in it. So that's why I still say sometimes the mountain doesn't go, I still turn. One day, God said to me, he showed me a little fish in a fishbowl. I think I heard it when a preacher preached it long ago, the story. But he reminded me of it. I, he showed me this fishbowl with a little fish. Then he showed me a bigger bowl with a bigger fish. Because the water and the amount of water determine how big. The, the container determined the growth of the fish. Then I saw a dam and I saw big fish. Then I saw the ocean. And I saw those blue whales in that vision. And God said to me, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So He explained to me, He said, if people are in this place of, this, of the Spirit of Christ, being in the Spirit, remember I said walking in the Spirit, is trusting Jesus. 
If you were not here, I'm saying it again. Walking in the Spirit is actually trusting Jesus, not your own effort. The fruit of the Spirit is those things, and the fruit of the flesh is those things. But walking in the Spirit is trusting Jesus, not your own strength. So, if we bring the gospel, which causes people to look to Jesus and trust Jesus, we are creating for them an ocean of the Spirit. <laughs> um, we broke all religious systems that keeps them in little bowls. You don't break a religious system. You just bring the Spirit and it sets people free. <laughs> yeah, it's not speaking against systems. It's just bringing the Spirit. So if I preach Christ, I cause people to be put in an environment that can cause them to grow into the stature of a blue whale. <laughs> and so God said to me, Marnes, you are that whale. Because you keep on looking to me. He says, keep on looking to me. You'll remember this is who you are. And he said to me, Marnes, you are a giant of the deep. God said it to me, you are a giant of the deep. Now I say to you, so are you. So are you. I was praying, I was crying that night when God showed me that vision. Because I was fighting all these things, bad habits, bad thoughts. I was just becoming this, this, this Christian that wants to live for Jesus. but And so I was thinking, I'm a loser, I can't make it. And then God came and He gave me the right image of who I was. And He completely set me free. Just that light. Okay? So, it, I was free. I just now received my freedom. <laughs> so, the next day, a friend of mine. I never get postcards. But a friend of mine was somewhere overseas. Like in a different nation. Sorry. Uh, Internet, like a, I can't remember where. And that friend sent me a postcard. Said, I just wanted to tell you where I am and this and this. And just want to say thank you for the influence in my life. You've been a blessing. So he, he's just encouraging me. And then there was a picture on the back of the postcard of a blue whale that is jumping, breaching the waters. And underneath is written, Giant of the Deep. I get goosebumps all over my body. The previous night, Jesus said to me, You're a giant of the deep. Keep on preaching the gospel, putting the emphasis on Jesus, and you will cause people to grow, to be giants in, of the deep. They are, they'll just find out. But in reality, they'll grow. You understand we are already giants of the deep but as we discover it we start to live like that you understand he, he, at the end of the day he wants us to live it out here not just be it in the spirit he wants he he wants us to be the victorious manifested sons of god that speak and see what we say Whew. giants of the deep this is who you are May God reveal to you your true identity. Through this message, may this just be the beginning. Your journey in life is about knowing Jesus. I'm t Marnes, you make it so simple. You know the results of this is a guy like William. If you know William, if you don't, don't I, I have the results of this gospel that I make so simple. He's a prophet that prophesies accurately and sets people free. That's the results. That's the fruit. So the fruit speaks. Jared that is coming to minister to you. He's been with us for four years. Just came to hell. I just ministered to him. Gave everything I have. When he's coming here, he's going to bless you all. Don't miss those meetings. Now, I said to my brother, I said, when I'm preaching, 
And Gareth is there, and I forget a scripture. I just ask him. He knows the Bible. That man is like a living Bible. He's going to preach your ears full of the truth. Don't miss those meetings starting. When is it starting? Last week of October. Don't miss those meetings. So I spoke, but I, I want to say the simplicity of the gospel caused him to be raised up to touch nations. Here you are hearing the same simple, uncomplicated gospel. A message that helps you to see how easy it is. It was difficult for Jesus, but it's easy for you. It's so easy. Listen, the gospel is not cheap. The gospel is free. <laughs> There's a difference between cheap and free. It's like it's not even cheap. It's free. But it cost him his life. With his precious blood, he redeemed you. But you received that gift. It's like someone bringing to you a precious gift. The best they have. And they come and they give you this gift. I mean, doesn't it say something about their hearts for you? That they're willing to give their best gift. Jesus is God's best gift to us. And I'm telling you, I love my sons. And if I think how much I love them, and God the Father loved His Son, and He gave Him up for us all. It means that it's not that He loved Him less. It says He loved us so much that He couldn't allow us to be lost. So He had to redeem us by sending His own Son. Whew. The gospel is free. It's not cheap. What you receive from Jesus, you receive by grace. The way of Jesus is grace. Guys, I don't care what people do with grace. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it remains awesome. <laughs> and you need it. <laughs> Don't think of what other people do and misuse the grace. and Just make sure you are receiving grace. <laughs> because you need it. <laughs> I said grace is not important. Grace is everything. Grace is not the cherry on the cake. It's the whole cake. <laughs> you know the expression. We use the expression, it's the cherry on the cake. It's, it's, it's awesome, it's beautiful, it's just the cherry on the cake. No, it's the whole cake and the cherry. <laughs> Anything we receive from God, we receive by grace. You don't receive by merit. The New Testament is a testament of grace. And as soon as we accept that, we're going to see it. Tremendous result. Tremendous result. Okay. So the sins are forgiven. I'm completely washed, free, cleansed, holy, righteous, blameless. But now, that is my starting blocks. Or well, this is now where I live from. My platform. On this platform is Jesus. Now see this picture. And I am His bride. <laughs> I know I don't look like a bride, but trust me, I am. And so here is Jesus, and here I am, his bride. And he says to me, will you dance with me? I'll say to him, yes. So I receive Christ. Okay? So I dance with Jesus. In a love relationship. And the more I dance with Jesus the more His life shines through me, touches the world. Your life is a dance with Jesus. Your life is enjoying the company of your husband, Jesus. Isaiah 54 says, Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is His name. The Holy One of Israel, now we are God's people, is your Redeemer. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. The, we are now the church, the city that is set on a hill. So, I just enjoy this dance. Let me explain it further. 
I am married to Christ. I'm His bride. So the purpose of our relationship is not that I should change, but I should enjoy this marriage. And out of this relationship comes the fruit. Now, I don't want to get technical on you, but we don't get married just to produce fruit. Children. I see everyone is more or less over a certain age here. We get married because we love one another and then we enjoy intimacy with one another. And so, we are living in a love relationship. And the result of that thing <laughs> is sometimes <laughs> when we are in that position, children. You get it? It's the fruit of intimacy. All fruit that you experience in a Christian life comes with intimacy or out of intimacy with Jesus. Intimacy, I'm not only speaking about that kind of intimacy. Fellowship, oneness, talking to Him, fellowshipping, oneness. All fruit comes out of that. Let me put it straight to you. you your only goal as a Christian... Your only goal is to know Him out of relationship more. Your only goal and aim must be I want to know Him. Because most Christians, their only aim was I must become better for Him. I must try and be better. They made that the aim. Jesus gave us a gift of righteousness so that we can have another aim. I want to know Him. My platform is I'm righteous. <laughs> uh, I am a pure and spotless bride of Christ. Not going to be, I am. <laughs> right now. If you see yourself through God's eyes, now, your whole life will be changed. If you can see yourself as He sees you. My brother, if you can see yourself as Jesus sees you. This is, this is maybe going to be funny, but let me explain, alright? So here you come and Jesus sees you. Whoa! You! Yeah, wow! This is how He feels about you. His heart is... Whoa! But you think... Mwah. Not really, but... For in for a explanation, but he think, he sees you and he thinks, wow. You are his pride, you are his heart's desire, you are everything to him. That's why I say, if we can see ourselves through his eyes, now we see ourselves through our own eyes, and we think we are chickens, <laughs> and yet we are eagles. <laughs> So it doesn't help I preach to you and you constantly think you're a chicken. You, you understand? I preach to you, you're, you're, you're weak, you must be better. Why are you so sinful? Come on, get ready, get better. Hey, what's wrong with you guys? Hey, so if I keep on preaching that, I keep on telling you you're a chicken. Then at the end I say, fly like an eagle. So here you go, thinking you're a chicken. Trying to fly like an eagle. But if I can teach you that you are an eagle. If I can teach you that you are a giant of the deep. And you start to get that image. Okay. In this dance with Jesus. You are getting your identity. Out of this love relationship. Perfect love. Cast out all fear. My life is about dancing with Jesus. Getting this love from Him into my heart. Perfect love casts out all fear. If fear is gone, darkness has no power over you. It is simply there because of fear. 
And fear is simply there because you don't know how much He loves you. And it's not condemnation that I'm bringing on you. I'm saying there's hope. <laughs> Even if you feared up to this day, you can be fearless for the rest of your life. You understand? He loves you more than what you'll ever know. You're, you, you guys, are you, you, related, not friends? Friend. Now, I want to say, up to this point, you lived in fear. But Jesus, tonight, by this message, you're going to experience the love of Christ. And I want to say the same for you. Because I saw as I was speak, speaking to her, I saw it's the same thing here. From now on, you are living in victory because of the love of Jesus. There is nothing more powerful than this little thing we call love. And true love is the love of Christ for me and you. It cast out fear. So you get your identity here in the arms of Jesus. If you are still too busy attacking your mountain with a shovel and a fork and jumping on your mountain and fighting the devil with everything, if you're still there and you're not here, you understand what, where, what I'm getting at? It's a victory that's been given. And it's been given freely. And it's obtained through this love relationship with Jesus. And so your mountain becomes more a molehill. Because not, it's always been the same, but you have just realized who you are. Now you're a giant. Now you just step over it. The mountain was so great, you thought, I'm never going to get over this problem. This thing is consuming my life. I'm defeated every day by this thing. How will I ever get the victory? Stop trying. <laughs> I said stop trying. Maybe, not maybe. Your answer is stop trying to get the victory. Come to Jesus and say, will you help me? My wife, if she doesn't get a can open or something open, she tries once. She doesn't go and break her arm and sweat. She just, she just said, Marnes, come and help me. So here comes the husband with strength. <laughs> ah, open. She's clever. She's not going to break her arm. To open the thing. She knows the one with the strength. I know it's a funny example, but just take it spiritually. The answer, the one with the power, boop, opens the can or opens the bottle. <laughs> she doesn't try ten times after one time. But you get those stubborn ones. They'll try. I can't open this thing. And then, will you help me? <laughs> My wife knows. One time, then she gives it to me. May you also be the one that quickly realize you don't have the ability to conquer this mountain. May you quickly realize you don't have the ability to open this can or this bottle. And come to you, your husband. His name is Jesus. And He has all power and authority. And He invested it in you, right? He, he did. But out of this relationship, then you speak. It's different. It's like my wife, when I'm not there, whatever she says, the guys at the church, they do. It's as if I'm there. <laughs> you understand? She's representing me. Or us. <laughs> she speaks as, as if I'm speaking. She's doing the thing. <laughs> she preached two services on Sunday. And so that's the way it is. Jesus is our husband. 
we are simply called to surrender. If you dance, if you are a dancer, right? I don't really dance. So I, you must be a spirit, spirit a example from the spirit. I'm not a dancer, but long ago, I, I have danced and tried to dance once. <laughs> but I realized the one is leading and the other one is following. Jesus is the leader. The best you can do is relax in his arms and let him lead you. Here you go. And why, where are you looking? Straight into his eyes. Look full in his wonderful face. I'm consumed. I'm consumed with this great love that comes from my husband. I don't have time for this devil that wants to distract me from this moment of embrace and love that comes from Jesus. You know, I can't miss this moment. My authority comes from there. So then I say, yes, I, I'm, I want to give you this example. Then we're going to do practical praying. You're going to practice. Okay? <laughs> yes, you're going to do it tonight. Okay. I was at a conference, a men's conference. There came a guy that they secretly got out of hospital. He, could, he was not allowed to go. They literally stole him out of the hospital. Against all medical advice to come to this conference. Uh, this is the truth. So now I'm one of the preachers. And so there's a preacher before me. His intention is so good. His heart is so good. He preached an awesome message. But when it was time to pray, he called everyone. And this guy was sitting on this chair. And here's this preacher and his whole team. And they had this guy. Come out, devil! I rebuke you, you devil of... Okay, I believe in praying in tongues, right? But this was a circus. This poor guy is sick and they are shaking him this side, this side, this side. Afterwards, nothing was changed. That guy was crying. I saw him leaving in tears. But the Lord said to me, just wait, your turn is next. Just wait. So I, I saw his tears as these guys harassed him in the name of Christianity. Okay? Listen to me. I'm helping you. So all of them was just rebuking, spitting, shouting, screaming at this devil. But seems like the devil is deaf. He didn't hear. So, now it's my turn. And I got boldness. Like a lion. I, th I thought, God... Today, we're going to help these people. And this man will be healed. So I said to him, come here, sir. I said to all of them, I said, now listen to me now. I want to show you this. Come and sit. I took his hand. I said, I just command all pain to go. Thank you, Jesus, that you healed this man's pain today. Amen. He went like this. The tears started flowing. My pain is gone. My pain is gone. I am healed. He jumped up. He started running. I am healed. I am healed. <sighs> it's not to prove that I'm great. Listen, I'm dead. I've been crucified with Christ. I have nothing to prove to no one. I'm a dead man. But a dead man that's been made alive in Christ with power, by grace, with no effort, this man who had cancer, also with open sores on his legs, all the pains went immediately. 
They shouted for 10, 15 minutes. It took me for maybe 10 seconds. What is the difference? What is the difference? Enjoying Jesus. What did they do? Overemphasizing the sickness and darkness. May you not be one of those. And their hearts was right. So I didn't rebuke, I didn't uh, put them in a bad light. I just said, now I want to show you something. For the sake of the people. For them, I didn't even say a word. Because their motive was pure. They wanted to help. They were sincerely wrong. But they were sincere. And for God, it, what counts is the motive. So, uh, you understand? People can be sincere, but sincerely wrong. And so let's embrace this, the motive and say, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but this is not effective. <laughs> and so the result spoke for itself. Ten seconds, complete healing. That man is healed up to this day. No cancer. All the sores were healed. Everything. He is completely whole. What happened when they did nothing? Okay? And it was even 15 guys around one man. Okay, so that's why we're going to see great results by grace. And so we look to Jesus and let the light take out sickness. Okay? So who's going to. Let's, let's do an illustration. Who has a pain and wants to get rid of the pain? Like you have now, not just the pain. Pain in the... Okay, we already healed a few people, so last night I anointed everyone, so probably most of you are healed already. But if there's a pain, do you have a pain now, sir? Okay, Is it, if you press, you can't sit for long, and then it becomes painful here. You can't? Okay, because of pain. Okay. Okay, so now let's demonstrate. Uh, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, do you want to st start the healing ministry? Come. <laughs> I know sometimes we need to learn, you know. We are, I'm not saying you are old, but we are a bit older, you know. You think so. I'm right in saying that. So we need to learn that even through children, like a six-year-old, I could have called my son here, and he would pray for you and you would be healed. So she is, has a desire to pray for the sick. And so she's going to pray. Just Now, let me illustrate. But then he's going to get healed before I illustrate. I'm not going to pray for him. Here, here's my patient, right? So I pray for my patient, okay? Or person. I call, don't worry. Just the sick one. I say, okay, this is what I will do. Father, I pray that you'll take the pain out of those places. Thank you, Lord, that he will be free from the pain in Jesus' name. While I'm praying, I'm seeing the pain go. Amen. Then I will ask him, won't you just test it? Will you try and do something? Then he'll try and do this, and he'll tell you, it's gone. Or he'll say, oh, it's still sore. Then you just say, oh, doesn't matter. Let's pray again. Or, thank you, Jesus. Do you understand you have no pressure? He's just going to tell you how it is. He's going to be honest, and you're just going to minister. This will be awesome. Put your hand and do it. She's going to pray for you. I believe you'll be healed, but you can tell us what happened. In the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of infirmity get out of his body now. I release life and wholeness, complete healing from head to toe. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Check out. Now just test. You have to test this. Let's test it. Pain-wise, I know you're a bit stiff, but pain-wise, do you feel any pain there? You can tell the truth. Slightly. It's better. Just, just come up again, sir. 
Let, you're going to do a workout here today in church. <laughs> let, just once more. Let her pray once more. This is awesome. So we say, thank you, Jesus. There's improvement. Let's see now. In the name of Jesus, complete restoration, complete healing. Not 50%, 70%, but 100% wholeness in this body. Every pain be gone. Life, 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 life be, life be. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, sir, sorry. Just go down once more. Taste it. You can just taste it and tell us how you feel. Honestly. Huh? Right side is gone. Let's do it a, th a third time. <laughs> Whoa, what is best for you? That way. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We are doing so much to you, but it's worth it. It's worth it. She's going to go for it. This is, listen, and he's speaking the truth. First of all, it became better. Secondly, the one side left. Now we go for the last time. Just go. Yeah. For healing on one side, complete restoration, and even we thank you for the healing on, on the other side also. It began, it has begun, it has begun, complete wholeness, completely be gone, 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 gone now in the name of Jesus. Complete restoration, wholeness, be made whole, be made whole, be made whole, be gone now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Just once more, sir. What I was showing you when I said, see it go. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell you. You can join in the prayer and see it go. How do you feel, sir? Huh? How do you feel? Still a little. Okay. Amen. That's good. That's good. You can say it. Okay, she wants to go. Let her go once more. That's good. That's what I'll do. That's exactly what I did last night. I prayed for people like that. The hearing, that one lady, the hearing improved. But she's not, she's not healed. You understand? So, so she couldn't hear like me. But the hearing improved. Amen. That is perfect. What happened? Did you feel it go? She's persistent. This is good. What's it, what does he say? He said it is healed. Amen. That's awesome. He did well. She did well. This is awesome. So, what she did, when you prayed, that you, you imagined, right? You used the imagination part. And so you saw it go. You saw the light, or you saw the sickness, the pain, or you saw the light coming. Um, I try to explain to the rest of you. You can join in. You can just, without saying a word, just see the pain go. As a church, we can all together just see the pain go. Not in effort, but just relax. So I want to, uh, she did very well. This was perfect. I, there's no right and wrong way. I want to, the, I want to overemphasize Jesus and the light. So, but there's no right and wrong way. So what you did was perfect. And when they are healed... They are healed. That's what we want to get to. So you can say whatever you want to do, but keep on focusing on Jesus. He is powerful. Keep on resting while you pray. Don't go into too much effort. Keep on resting while you pray. Resting doesn't mean speaking in a certain way. She spoke with authority. She said, speak, go, pain, go. I'm okay with that. That is perfect. This, it's not in the tone of voice. It's in where you are in Christ. In resting. And you'll see great results. So that was good. That was awesome. And the pain went. She persisted until it went. 
And you really felt a difference. Sir. They, they, if you sit now, it feels much better. Thank you, Jesus. That is awesome. That is awesome. So, um, who else has a pain? Anyone? Let me just... Okay, say you don't have a pain, but let's use you as, as an example. <laughs> Maybe you felt mine isn't so big, so let me pray for you anyway. <laughs> okay. Say, say, just for example, I'm, I'm just using examples. You have pain. Amen. <laughs> okay, do you see this? She was thinking, must she come out, must she not come out? But the Spirit knows. And she says she has that pain there in the arm. If you do this. Okay. I'm going to demonstrate now. And then we're going to turn to one another and pray for, for, for your friend. Even if he's not sick, <laughs> imagine, do an imaginary thing there. Say, he has, like, imagine he has pain in his shoulder and you pray for it to be gone. Do you get it? But if they're sick, do it really. <laughs> afterwards, afterwards. This is the way I do it. It's not a rule. Don't listen too much to what I say and make it a rule. Say whatever comes out of your mouth. She did it so nicely every time. She, just, she never did it the same. Did you realize? All five times it was different. And it's good. Keep going with what comes out of your mouth. Okay? So, you cannot do it wrong. You, you cannot miss it. By doing it, you did it right. And even better when they are healed. <laughs> then you can feel like, yeah, Jesus. So what I'll do, I'll tell all my friends, someone got healed today. I'm like a child. I share these testimonies. Immediately, if one of you get healed, my wife knows at home. <laughs> Listen, Clarissa, there was a lady that we prayed for in hospital that can now walk. I immediately called my wife. And she said, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> Be like children. Be like children when it comes to these things. Oh, I'm attacked by an insect. <laughs> Maybe it's the devil. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Just joking. Just joking. <laughs> Just joking. Where's the pain? There. Okay. You have that pain and it's troubling you. But also sometimes you get a funny pain. Yeah. What is that? I s not, I'm not asking you. Do you get that pain? No. You don't get a pain here. But here? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. You see what I did? Got a thought. Stepped out. She said, no. It doesn't matter. I heard it. Maybe it's beneficial for her and it's going to bless her. Or maybe I missed it. I don't know. I don't worry. But I, she'll be healed. <laughs> okay. So the illustration would be, this is how I would normally pray. Father, thank you. And you take out the pain out of her body. Remember, my authority is not in the fact that I com command. It's in who I am in Christ. That's why I can pray like that and see results. Thank you, Jesus, that the pains will go and leave out of her arm right now. Or, let me say this way, I speak life to your body right now. Let the pain just disappear as we speak. Thank you, Jesus. All pains just go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What am I doing when I'm quiet like this? I'm seeing it go. Thank you, Jesus. Now, taste it. What do you feel? Slightly. Is it a bit better, honestly, or the same? Slight pain. Thank you, Jesus. Let it go in Jesus' name. Just keep it like this. Thank you, Jesus. All the pains are going. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just do that. What happened? A slight pain there. But if you move it, is there an improvement or is it just the same? The improvement is there. Which is good. 
Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so now I'm at number three. You know what I do then? I try less. <laughs> so thank you, Lord, that all the pains will just be gone, disappear from a body. We praise you. We thank you for it. Amen. Just move again. Is it gone? Thank you, Jesus. Jesus! Did you see? Number three came through. <laughs> okay, listen. Uh, here's what I do. I pray three or four times like she did, and then I'll, I'll do this. If they are not healed, I'll say, thank you, Jesus, that healing will take place by your grace, and you love them. I speak healing over you. Amen. And I leave that word to manifest. You get it? But mostly you don't come to number four. Mostly they are healed by number one, sometimes by number two, sometimes by number three. So it's just the way I minister. It's not a rule. But I don't take no for an all. Like God already said yes. So when the sickness is not going first time, I'll pray again. So then I'll do this. Say you prayed for him now. And he said, it's still painful. Then you just forget it and say, God bless you, brother. He loves you. Then you go to the next person. And you pray. Now here's a tip. Paul explained it. But I took it when I ministered in the hospital. The people are lying in beds. Right? They are lying in beds. So I came to one person. I pray. I see nothing happens. For, for example... So, I took Paul's advice. Forgetting what lies behind. <laughs> Stretching forward to what lies ahead. And I pray for the next patient. And I completely forget that. Because I'm not God. I'm called to lay hands on the sick. I did what I should. It was a success. Even though... The pain is still there. And we have seen people coming back and said, you prayed for me in hospital. When you prayed, I felt nothing, but the pain left as you left. We have seen that. But don't stick with that. We try and test. Like she did. Test it again. Go down. Test it again. <laughs> you had to go down. Test again. Or just to, if someone, like I, I did with you, I, I said to her, first, I didn't, just pulled her up. I could have, but I just said, let's just move the legs. Remember, I said, let's just check the legs. And so we checked the legs. And she felt the pain was gone. I said, but let's stand. So I helped her up. You understand? And then I walked with her like this. She was walking difficult, but she felt the pain was gone. So I made sure, is your pain really gone? And then one moment I left her. <laughs> <laughs> she was like going like this. And remember, I left your hand. And she, now she has to walk. And she walked without assistance. For the first time in six months, that's what she told me. Without assistance for the first time in six months. Pain is gone. God did a miracle. So, let them test. If I do the hearing like I did, I test many times beforehand and then I test afterwards. If they are totally deaf, I, I don't sometimes, I don't test. I believe them. I make sure. I, really, you can't hear anything. Yes. Then I take it as a yes. Then I pray for them and if they hear, I celebrate. Um, blind eyes, we try and test. I always say we're not doctors. We can't test with that exact thing, but we can test in, a, in our way. So I'll put fingers up. How many fingers? I'll get something to read. I go for something immediately. I don't want to leave them with this thing of one day I'll be healed. They had many prayers like that. I said, no sir, today. Today. What time do we leave? No, I'm, I still have to 8.55. No, sorry. I, I'm just thinking, am I now missing the thing? Bless you. Love you guys. You, you, are, you are blessed. Go and pray for the sick. 
do the miracles of Christ. Bless you. Bye. Okay. So, I just thought I missed the time here. Uh, where was I? Okay. So, I do something immediately. I let them test. I let them read something. I let them move the arm. And here's what I do. I say, tell me, how do you feel now? Move that arm. Bend your back. Th try this. Press there. So I, I immediately I let them test. Then if it's gone, we celebrate. Because it's amazing. That moment they test also, it's amazing. It, it's like it... It's almost like it manifests just before and in that moment. So you want them to do something. Small thing in faith. Not for them to try and get healed, but to test if, if they are healed. You know? So you test them. And then, like I said, mostly they'll be healed before three and four. I'm telling you, Jesus is with you in this thing. You are going to see amazing results but should it come to that point where you prayed three and four times, then you say, I prayed for you. Jesus loves you. Amen. With God, it's always 100%. With us, we are growing in this relationship. We are getting to know Jesus. With Him, 100%. So I'll leave at least an opportunity. I'm not going to say, oh, sorry, you're not healed. Now it won't work. I'll just leave him with something. Father, thank you that his pains will be gone. I speak this word over his body. And may he never ever experience those pains again. Amen. God bless you, sir. Love you. See you again. Forgetting what lies behind. <laughs> Stretching forward to what lies ahead. <laughs> You'll never forget that. If you can learn this. You will, be, you will be effective in healing ministry. That doesn't mean I won't pray for him again. Just in that moment I forget. So I can help the next one effectively. Not thinking. I've prayed like that. Three people. Not healed. Fourth one healed. I, then many times. First one healed. Second one healed. Third one healed. I don't let it face me. I'm there to pray for the sick. I must lay my hands on them. That's my duty. That's what I'm called for. It's a success. And can I give you a clue? <laughs> Joy <laughs> is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And seriousness is not equal to holiness. <laughs> Being serious or tense or like this, is not bringing more results. Enjoy. Have fun. Enjoy. Like, be full of joy. Even that ministers to people. Have you been around someone that's always full of joy? Man, if you spend enough time with them, you, you feel like you also want to just smile. You feel happy. So even your happiness and your joy can help that person. Because being sick normally causes sickness in the emotions as well. I mean, those guys are suffering. They need some joy also. You'll see more results in joy than what you will see in stress and worry. Okay, so just, just remind yourself, if you find yourself praying for the sick and it becomes tough, just, just stand one step back and say, <laughs> I'm taking this thing way too serious. Jesus didn't call me to stress over sick people. He called me to pray for them. So let me pray with joy. Netsua. That was Afrikaans. Just like this. Results, results, results. You can do it. Now turn to a person. If they, ask them if they have any pain or problem or sickness. Turn to one of your friends. Then one of you going to pray for the one... And then the other one's going to pray for the, uh, you know, after you're done. Like, just what I did now, you're going to do with one another. If there's no sickness and pain, okay, for those who are not sick, say you don't have any pain or sickness. All you do, listen to this, I just quickly want to explain. All you do is, 
Imagine living waters flowing. Jesus said rivers of living waters will flow. That's one thing I forgot to tell you. I, when I minister, I see that. So I see out of these hands. This is like taps. So it's open. So I stretch my hand. Water. 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 So now I put this tap here. <laughs> Not like this. Just putting it there. And then I release living waters. So see the living waters flowing through a body. So it can touch their emotions. Maybe you're not sick, but maybe you need some joy. Maybe you need some life in your thoughts. Maybe worries must go. Fear must go. So what causes this down? Love. Jesus. The Spirit. The light. Amen. Okay. So let's do it. Yeah. I'll go to my brother here. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to practice on you. Thank you, Lord. I release living waters, abundance of life into your life, brother. You will enjoy perfect health and you will also re uh, be a minister of that life of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen.